Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 22nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This almost appears like a weekly event now, but we got more patches from Apple fixing three different vulnerabilities that are already exploited in the wild. The three vulnerabilities actually sort of nicely chain uh, one after another. We do have sort of for initial access a vulnerability in WebKit that allows arbitrary code execution. So a user basically would visit a website and then the attacker gains access inside the Safari sandbox. Then to use the second vulnerability, which is a uh, elevation of privilege vulnerability, so that's a kernel vulnerability, so that likely allows breaking out of uh, the uh, sandbox and get full system access. And then lastly, we do have a vulnerability that allows bypassing of the signature validation for applications. That's how either sort of for initial access, a malicious application could be installed, or then you know, as a result, after uh, the attacker has access to the system, they could use a malicious application and sort of gain a foothold on the affected phone. Now, the patches are being released for pretty much all operating systems, macOS, watchOS, and iOS, iPadOS, but Apple states in its advisory that uh, this particular vulnerability is currently only being exploited against iOS before 16.7. That being said, uh, it uh, does also potentially affect iOS 17, which was just released. And then as typical for WebKit vulnerabilities, we also get an update for Safari that's mostly then targeting older versions of macOS. And that particular update for Safari, of course, only addresses the WebKit problem. So get patching, not sure why this wasn't released sort of as a rapid security update, but as a more complete operating system update. So a little bit more downloading you need to do here. And talking about Apple zero days, we do have more details regarding an other vulnerability that Apple patched, I think about a week or two ago, and this was the image IO vulnerability. Turns out that the same vulnerability was actually patched in different systems using different CVE numbers, which is somewhat confusing. For Apple, it was a vulnerability in image IO. That's the image uh, framework that Apple uses to parse images like WebP. In uh, Google Chrome, it was also patched. And then there's also, well, uh, libwebp, which is a library that parses WebP. And probably actually both Google Chrome as well as Image.io and Apple are using that library. So that in some ways was sort of the actual vulnerability. But now we have multiple CVEs for essentially the same vulnerability. Well, a blog post by Ben Hawks goes into a ton of detail on the vulnerability, how it exactly works, how to possibly exploit it. So uh, this is now certainly a must-patch fast vulnerability. And again, remember, there are a couple different names for essentially this same vulnerability. So uh, make sure that you are patching this across the different uh, systems. And talking about Deja Vu yet again, uh, well, uh, MoveIt has another service pack available. That's the September 2023 service pack. It fixes uh, three vulnerabilities. Two of them are rated high and are patching yet more SQL injection vulnerability. Now, the SQL injection vulnerabilities are not quite as bad as we have seen before with MoveIt. The first one does require user access, so you have to be authenticated. The second Second one even does require administrator access. The third one is sort of a little bit the sleeper vulnerability here. It's only rated medium, but it is a cross-site scripting vulnerability that uh, may allow an attacker then to actually gain access as a user, given that the attacker could inject JavaScript that will then be executed in the victim's browser. If this victim is a user, is an administrator, well, uh, there are some possibilities here for privilege escalation. The announcement doesn't really go into a lot of depth here. 
And all then I don't just want to let you hanging here for the weekend with all bad news. We also have some good news, and that's that Windows 11 is improving its passkey of support by allowing you to actually manage your passkeys better. So uh, interesting improvement here. I've often talked about passkeys, how I think that they have a lot of promise. Currently, I think a little bit uh, slow in pickup, but uh, as systems like Windows 11 make it easier to use passkeys, maybe we'll have more people jump on that bandwagon. Also, GitHub uh, is further supporting passkeys, allowing them sort of as your only uh, login if you want to. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for leaving a good comments in your favorite podcast app. And talk to you again on Monday. Bye.